So, well, what's interesting, though, about this in our marriage is Pesa will be sitting there telling me a story, and I'm literally staring at him right in the face, and he's like, hello, why aren't you listening? Pesa Shayo. And we're so excited because this is one of the few places to find encouragement regarding marriage and just being happy as a couple, enjoying life together. Oh yeah, at Live Your Best Marriage, we always believe that every marriage has a chance to be awesome and also to be fulfilling. Of course. And if you guys want to connect with us more, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Whitney Shayo. And I'm at Pesa Shayo. Or you can like our Facebook page. Oh, yeah, which is Live Your Best Marriage. Yes. Or you can go back to the place where it all started and is still going on. LiveYourBestMarriage.com forward slash blog. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, if you, and actually, if you go to our, po- um, our website, we have all the podcasts there. I think it's Live Your Best Marriage forward slash podcast. Yes, absolutely. And also on the blog, you will find right now we have three different categories for our posts. We have communication, we have parenting, and we have one called redemption. We actually have some folks who are going to be writing guest posts for us because they have gone through some really extraordinary things in their marriages. Um, And it's I call it redemption because it's really recovery. It's a place where people can find hope and inspiration if they're going through a tough time. For example, if it's an addiction or if they were struggling with an adultery situation, we'll be having some contributions there. And so I am really, really excited to open that up. Oh, cool. Yes. So, um, so, and you also talked about that you, you have a section about parenting. What yes. do you know about parenting? So, well, <laughs> well, Pesa and I have four kids and, and we also homeschool. So the parenting section right now, we've got a few articles just about um, helpful tips for stay-at-home moms. We, now we need to get some tips from Pesa about stay-at-home dads. Um, or about being a stay-at-home dad. And um, also, I would really love to get to the point where we can have a homeschooling tab separate from the parenting tab. But we don't have that much content right now. But I really do think in the near future, we will open that up and also have homeschooling as well. Cool, cool. Yeah, and then the communication one, of course, pretty much covers a broad range of issues and I guess most of them could just be traced back to a communication problem so oh yeah that's why that tab is so huge that's where most of our articles are so so yeah. anyway that's exciting we have <laughs> so, so look forward for the the recovery section I'm I'm really really excited about that so what are we going to talk about today Whitney So, well, okay, now that I just brought up communication, I remembered that Pesa and I have very different talking styles. What is your talking style? So, what's your talking style? So, mine is, I have ADD and I like my stories to be really short. Really, really fast and really short. We will never find out if you are just listen to the podcast. <laughs> I know, I know, because I'm such a... I like to blab a lot, but if I'm the one listening, <laughs> it, ha- it better be quick. No, no, I don't mean that like in a selfish <laughs> way. I mean that in the least selfish, selfish way, way possible. It's just I... As long as people on. are listening to you, you don't mind. No, it's not that way at all. Yeah. Actually... Outside of the podcast, I am a very quiet. I'm. I'm I think, such an introvert. I think they should funny. ask me. It's no, but see, here's the thing. People like. They should recently. Ask me, I've yes. had several people tell me that I'm an extrovert, but I am not. I'm telling you, I am such an introvert. It's not even funny, and I always have been. Yeah. Really, like. Oh my goodness! But that's a whole another story. Maybe they should day. ask me. How come you? 
No, they should not ask you. <laughs> so, he, Pesa loves to chit chat. He loves to talk. He no, I'm just, the introvert. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's he. You are somewhat of an introvert, but oh my goodness, when it's time to have a conversation, I mean, you could just talk and talk and talk for, yeah. I don't think so. Definitely. So, so my my talking style is mostly. <laughs> say a few words and keep quiet mm -mm, mm -mm. that's how it feels like no when and, I'm around you and and <laughs> <laughs> no and Pesa is very popular on my side of the family because and with a lot of people that we interact with because they just feel like they can open up to him they just feel they trust him so much because he's just really really good at i mean he can have a conversation with anybody about anything and so i just you know what i always try to find a way we can connect yeah see there you yes, go i just I, and so the funny thing is there's always something with everybody mm -hmm. that we can con we can connect i know i've seen that so you know i just on Monday, I went to get our groceries from Walmart. <laughs> so I, I get there, and this guy was helping with me with our gro with the groceries. Guess what? Mm -hmm. We started talking. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason, we became friends. Even by the time I was leaving Walmart, we were shaking hands. And this guy is a total stranger. Never met him. Like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. How See, crazy is that? Yeah. There you go. It's like he was helping with my groceries. We talked. We even like just we just connected, I guess. And uh, so whoever you are, <laughs> I mean, I had a great time talking to you. <laughs> that and that's how you are with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I mean, mm -hmm. like the guy who came to fix our cable the other day. Yep. Yeah. By the time he was living here, he he had told me so many things about how his day was, and I had told him about my day. And but there's just a way you can connect with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how does this? Okay. So well, what's interesting though about this in our marriage is, Pesa will be sitting there telling me a story, and I'm literally staring at him right in the face, and he's like hello, why aren't you listening? And I'm like, I am. I am totally listening. Keep talking. And he's like, no, I need you to acknowledge that you got that point so I can move on to the next <laughs> point. He's like, I want interaction with you. I want you to at least say, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm just like trying so hard to focus. To understand on... what he's saying. Like, like... No, it's not that. Like, I'm just my attention span is so short. I'm trying really hard to just focus on what he's talking about. And also, I don't know if it's an introvert thing, but like, I'm just quiet. I just, I have a tendency to just listen to him and not like say a bunch of stuff in between. So, so it's, it's interesting because that has started a few <laughs> A few interesting talks <laughs> in addition to what we were already having. So, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, just so, so all the couples out there, what, like, just think about like, what's your communication style? Is it, are you the quiet one? Are you the talkative one? Or what kind of interaction do you prefer? And it's, it really is super important to kind of think about it because it, it can have a huge, huge impact on your overall relationship, I think. Oh, yeah. And if somebody is um, an extrovert who loves to go out and have fun with, with a lot of people, like just having so many people in the house lights them up, and they're married to somebody who just is an introvert, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, introvert, who mm -hmm. just loves to have a few conversation with few intimate people right. and going into big crowds just drains them. Right. You got to figure out how to make that work because staying at home might be draining one, but might be making the other, the other 
spouse really excited. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And what uh, is the name of the book? Quiet. Yes. By is. Remind me of the author's name. I don't remember the author. Is this is it Carol Dweck or no? I want to say Susan Cain. Yes, yeah, Susan Cain. Yes. Okay, Susan but I didn't want to say the wrong name. Susan Cain. So the book Quiet by Susan Cain talks about the differences between extroverts and introverts, and so I I thought that was really fascinating to learn that an extrovert gets their energy by being around people yeah and the introvert gets their energy by turning inward just uh being alone yeah being alone yeah. and so and i totally would prefer on a friday night which which is every friday night stay at home like not go anywhere mm -hmm. if i go out it's just to a restaurant with my husband it's not like I've never been a party kind of person or, like, I don't want to say, like, bars and stuff. I've, like, never, ever, ever. I just, I, because when I'm in that situation, I don't know what to say. Okay. I want time to plan what I'm going to say. So if, if, like, I'm giving a speech or something, I don't really mind that as much because I have time to prepare. Okay. So it's not like the fear of talking in front of a group. It's just I want to know what I'm saying ahead of time. And, you know, I used to be like that. I used to be... Um, so I think you can also change. Mm -hmm. Because I used to be like that. I just didn't want to go to places, to, to um, groups. Mm -hmm. But I found out that it's hard when I'm about to go. Mm-hmm. I feel that resistance. Oh, I don't want to do that. But once I get in there, right, I just put in my my game face, right, and I just know what to do. Like I remember there was a time we had gone to uh, to Kansas City, mm -hmm. and when we got to the hotel, we were supposed to. It was supposed to be like this event. Mm -hmm. When we got to the hotel, you just wanted to stay in the room, and it was like eight p.m. I wanted to go to bed. <laughs> I just want to go to sleep. But I was like, no, let's go downstairs yeah. and hang out at the lobby with the mm -hmm. folks, right? Yeah. And guess what? I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, right? we went and it was fun. <laughs> but I would have been perfectly content just staying in the room and watching TV or something. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. And, and now that I've done, started doing marketing, I pretty much, to an extent... I can say, hi, how are you? Like, I can talk for a couple minutes, mm -hmm. but that's about it. Like, I run out of things to say <laughs> after a while. And for me, it's not so much about running out of things to say. I found out that it's it's not so much about knowing everything mm -hmm. that you need to say. It's just about, like, facilitate. There's a way you can facilitate that talk. Right. The other person says what they're saying, and then you can... I don't know how, like you just find what to say from what they told you. Yeah. And now I'm becoming really good at just asking people a bunch of questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, and one of the first things I always ask is how's your grandkids or how's your little one? Mm -hmm. And then that just, that makes them light up and that keeps them talking for yeah. a, a while. And I love hearing about their kids. I mean, I have kids, so I love hearing about how their kids are doing. So that has been a really great thing for me. I just ask them a ton of questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people enjoy talking about themselves. So Yes, I mean, just... So when I go to these situations, I don't put so much emphasis on exactly what I will say. Mm -hmm. But I let the other person... There's a, I call it like a dance. Mm -hmm. like there's some kind of a flow that we go... Mm -hmm. back and forth so it's i'm not like specifically i have to say this mm -hmm. but things will just open up and we'll just take it from there so when it comes to marriage and a relationship really i can see how it would it could be frustrating if one person is expecting more conversation from the other yes but they're not getting it Yes. I can I can totally see how that could turn into a rejection type scenario where they where they feel like they're being rejected. 
because the conversation is just not, just doesn't flow. And so that might be an issue that a newly married couple, couple. might go through. Have to, go, have to work through that. Yeah. And sometimes um, I also see the problem can be when somebody wants to invite a lot of friends home. Right. Like bring some people over, wants to host parties all the time, mm-hmm. wants to go with their new wife or their new husband to events around town. Like maybe their calendar is full of events and they really want to take their spouse to events while the spouse is like, no, nah, I'm drained. I can't go to one more event mm-hmm. around town. So that can actually be an issue. And you'll find, we, I always call them orphans. They're mm-hmm. kind of orphans because they have a wife or they have a husband, but they go to all these events alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're pretty much solo. Yes. Yeah, so they like it, they like it, if an an event often because <laughs> they love to go to events, mm-hmm. but their spouse is like, no, there's no way I'm gonna go to one mm-hmm. more one more Wednesday night event or one more mm-hmm. uh, Thursday night event or one more Saturday evening event. Yeah. So, and it's not necessarily a bad thing because. Each couple can work their own thing out. Just right. the fact that your your husband or your wife is not going with you does not mean it's a bad thing. As long as you guys work, that you work it out in a way that you don't feel mm-hmm. rejected or rejected. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and and also in a way that you guys don't feel like you're a complete mismatch. Okay. Because I mean, I've definitely had that feeling before like even just a few days ago (laughs) Mm -hmm. Pesa was talking and he wanted feedback from me and I was just sitting there like trying to think like okay what like how am I gonna respond to this I don't even know like I'm not sure about what I want to do but he was waiting he's like okay hello I'm listening and I was like I don't know what to say And then finally I just said, okay, I will never be that girl who is just talking up a storm. Like, and so I, in that moment, I totally felt like, okay, uh, mismatch here. (laughs) Like, but I didn't didn't, didn't even feel like it was like a mismatch kind of situation. So I was feeling like, okay, I am never going to be good enough. I am never going to like give him the quality of conversation that he wants <laughs> like cuz yeah like if we're talking about something serious and we're trying to plan for something i just feel like i need that time to think about it and then put it into words okay i have a really hard time expressing myself and i know that sounds totally ridiculous because i yak most of the way through the podcast <laughs> But I really do. That is a huge struggle for me. So totally, yeah, in that moment, I felt like, okay, I will never be good enough for him. And maybe we are just not compatible. But which is, which just goes to show like how strong those emotions can become because the whole focus of our blog or our marriage ministry, whatever you want to call it, is that there is no perfect match out there. It is actually better for the two of you to be different. Yes. That actually makes it more fun. And you guys complement each other way better yes. when, when you're different. So, so yeah, that, I mean, honestly, that's just a personal testimony of how just feelings, you can get caught up in feelings and you're like, well, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really think I measure up. Yeah. So, and that's um, what I was feeling too. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what a, apparently you were oblivious, <laughs> but even though I told you, so, you know, I actually live in my world where I, I, yeah, I, I see what I want to see yeah. and I believe what I want to believe. So I know for some reason that just, I did not even get that one. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, as couples, just be cognizant of that, you know, just think like, okay, well, 
how is she interpreting this or how is he taking this or and and I mean it's not like it doesn't have to be like this constant okay I wonder 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 what he's thinking about that or I wonder no it doesn't it's just okay be aware of what your communication style is and if it's different okay that's fine if it's if they're similar if they're the same that's okay too it's just we just want to remind you guys, like, you don't have to think that you need to be a perfect match uh, yes. in order to be just, just, or have a great marriage, I guess. And especially if, by the time you've been together for 13 years, I mean, <laughs> people don't, chewing. yeah, people don't really <laughs> change that much, but it's actually a hard thing when you are starting out mm-hmm. before you really get the groove of things mm-hmm. when, uh, like you've been just married for one year or two mm-hmm. years and you're trying to figure out how this whole thing will work. Mm-hmm. And one person has a different talking style. The other mm-hmm. person has a different talking style. And it's actually getting into your nerves. Right. And you're feeling like, okay, this is not this is not how I'm planning to spend the rest of my life. And that is actually, that is a couple that we are talking to. I mean, if yeah. you've been together for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, by now... It's like, yeah, that's how he, that's how my husband talks. Oh, that's how my wife talks. Like, he doesn't really... It's like you're already okay with it. Well, and we've also had other things stacked against us or we've had other areas where we're so different that we kind of had to push through that, like being from different cultures, having different backgrounds. Oh, so, cause like I didn't know that matters. <laughs> even well, it doesn't. It shouldn't. But it we really I'm had just a giving lot you of, a hard time. A lot of issues with that. Like I still don't speak Swahili fluently. Like I mean, I don't know. I I can't I, say I speak it at all in front of him because he'll be like, "You don't." <laughs> okay, I mean, but, I don't speak English fluently too, but I just <laughs> just try to. No. Like, when it comes to Swahili, like, I know a lot of words, and I can put together a few sentences here and there, but... I'm just... Sometimes I feel really bad about that, the fact that it's been... We've been together so long, and I still don't know the language completely. Yeah. So, I kind of feel like that's something that... We need to... I don't know, it just... It bugs me. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I have to remind myself, like, okay, there are people from the exact same culture, speak the same language, and they're not, like, their bond isn't really that strong. But... Mm. But if you spoke this, if you spoke the same language, if you spoke Swahili, I'm sure the bond will be a little bit stronger. What do you think? It it could be, but honestly, so, so why don't you try to figure that out? Now? We will, we are, and we're also teaching our kids Swahili yeah. too. But we can be, a, you can be an example. So what I'm saying is, we've been able to build a strong bond and a strong marriage by going through a lot of other things, like raising our kids together, and just doing so many other, just doing life together, basically. Yeah. And so anyway, you don't have to be the same, I guess. I'll just keep repeating myself. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> Apparently, I'm the one. I honestly need that message more than anyone else. So yeah, I will that, keep repeating myself. Because that Swahili thing, I don't even bring it up. You're the one who always brings it up. Like, oh, I don't speak the language. Mm-hmm. And you go, there's so many variations of that. I don't speak Swahili Mm -hmm. so much. I'm like, I never bring it up, do Mm -hmm. I? No, you don't. Yeah. So maybe that's something that really bugs you more than bugs me. Yeah. Yeah, it totally bugs me. So (laughs) So maybe that's something you need to take care of, like learn Swahili. (laughs) I am. I'm working on it. I totally am working on it. So, okay. So... A tip that we can give you guys if if one of you likes to have a long conversation and the other likes to keep it short and sweet, what are some of the tips <laughs> you can give them, Pesa? 
<laughs> what I can say is just keep having a lot of conversation. I mean, I don't really want people to change themselves. There's mm-hmm. just, right. I don't know. Right. I don't know. I think that's the, actually the best tip you can give is don't try to change yourself. Yes. Just find, but, there's a way you can, I don't know. This, I, like, I can give you three tips or three steps. No, well, yeah. But like, if you feel like you need to accommodate, like make accommodations for the differences between the two. So like, I'll say if the person who likes to keep it... N- nice and short should learn how to have a long conversation (laughs) (laughs) yeah because i'm just thinking like okay if there's a way to balance it and i'm trying to think back and just picture ways that we've been able to balance it if you guys were if you guys were able to fall in love and until you decided that you want to get married because people don't change their mm-hmm. style of talking. So if he was loud and obnoxious and you still fe- <laughs> still fell in love with him, don't expect that he's going to be, he, he will stop being loud and obnoxious. Well, and that's, that's totally fine if, if someone is loud and obnoxious. But I mean, what about the other communication issues such as, I don't feel like I'm being heard. Or I don't feel like I'm getting my point across. I think if the person who just ha- feels like that tendency to talk more, mm-hmm. they might feel like the other person doesn't really listen completely. And so, they just need to keep... And I think... And, and honestly, I mean, I can definitely see why communication is listed as like... I don't think it's the number one reason for divorce, is it? I think because... Finances. Finances. I think either money or communication. Yeah. But I think money fights might be number one. But anyway, communication I know has always been at the top of the list for just reasons why couples feel like they weren't able to make it work. So, so. so like for me, I just would say that if you guys have been together this long... There's something that you guys are doing that's making it work. Yeah. Yeah. And when I say this long, is like you guys have crossed the dating and now you're married or you're mm-hmm. living together. So, I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. So, basically what we're saying is we are somewhat lost. We don't have the answers. <laughs> we're also going through the same thing. We're in the trenches with everyone else. So, so if somebody has a way of doing it, yeah, they can just put I it mean, in the comments. Put it in the comments. Yeah. Give us your tips because, I mean, a- any little piece of advice helps, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, folks. Thank you so much once again for listening. This wraps up another episode of the Live Your Best Marriage podcast. And until next time, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to share this episode and we will talk to you guys later. Bye and God bless. Are you tired of being upset, lonely, feeling empty, or just plain frustrated with your marriage? And no matter how hard you try, you're not getting anywhere, just going in circles. No matter how much you try to make time for one another in your schedule or how many times you say, I'm sorry, Pesa and I have put together 99 ideas to help you connect with that one special person so that things can start to be more like the way they were before everyday life got in the way and caused the two of you to drift apart. We want you to have 99 ways to show love to your spouse absolutely free. You can find it at 99waystoshowlovetoyourspouse.com. Because here at Live Your Best Marriage, we truly hope that the two of you can move closer together and enjoy the connection that comes from achieving a stronger bond. Again, that's 99 ways to show love to your spouse.com. That's the number 99 ways to show love to your spouse.com.